Today on Monkey Life. New arrival Oshin throws her weight around in the Orang nursery. You're not going to ambush them as they go through there. It's a big day for the park's latest stumpies. This is going to be the first day that they've ever stepped outside ever in their lifetime. And woolly monkey Lena takes a shine to new arrival Oaska. She's being a little bit flirty, so we've got high hopes that this is the start of something really quite positive. Monkey World in Dorset is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. It's home to more than 240 monkeys and apes. Dr. Alison Cronin and her team dedicate their lives to rescuing and rehabilitating primates from all over the world. The monkey's gotten really aggressive and has started self-mutilating. Overweight orangutan Oshin has been struggling to make friends since she arrived from South Africa. Her introduction to dominant female Arme and her sidekick Jolie didn't go well. Ami, stop it. No, that's not such a good plan. She's bigger than you. Oshin's frightened and in a new place. Ame's offended that there's somebody new in her house. She knows you're there. You'll lose. The two females couldn't find any common ground and so have been kept apart ever since. Today, animal director Jeremy has decided it's time for Oshin to meet the two youngest members of the orangutan nursery, Linda and Dinda. They've both lived in the nursery since their mothers rejected them. These two orangs are mischievous and playful and much smaller than Arme. But Jeremy isn't taking any chances and is on hand to referee. We've just got to evolve into this and everybody does their huffing and puffing and handbagging and all that sort of stuff. And then when that wears thin, you take it to the next level. The two girls seem keen to meet a potential new playmate, but Oshin is wary. Until she arrived here, she'd never had any contact with other orangutans, so doesn't really know how to behave with them. Girl, be careful. She's a good girl. Things haven't got off to a great start. Linga's in one of Oshin's favorite spots, her hammock, and she's not happy. As Oshin lunges at the young orang, Linga makes a sharp getaway. A green-eyed monster. Oshin reclaims her hammock and stays put. Jeremy is keen not to take sides. I'm trying to be less a part of it, just backing off like this. I don't think she's going to go wading in all guns blazing. Jeremy decides a bit of refreshment might help. If Oshin has something else to occupy her, she may not be as aggressive towards Linga and Dinda. But once the food has disappeared, Oshin decides it's time to throw her weight around again and show the younger girls who's boss. This has got a good exercise routine going. They wisely keep their distance. What's that doing? Where is everybody? The two girls don't really know what to make of this big orangutan. Linga tries to get a reaction, but Oshin isn't interested in making friends and Jeremy decides to call it a day. He doesn't want any of the orangs getting stressed. You're not going to ambush them as they go through there. No, you go back that way. No, Oshin. Jeremy always knew it would take a while for Oshin to integrate into the nursery group. When you think about it, she's 13 years old, she doesn't know an orang, she's never socialised with anything other than human beings. So it really isn't surprising, but it's not a problem. We just keep exposing her to, to these individuals until at some point they relax and coexist. But friendship at first sight is only, it only happens in fairy tales. It isn't, it isn't real. Another 
recent arrival has had no problems settling in. Six months ago, Gordon's son Jin was born. This is Gordon's group out here today. Um, so we've got Gordon, obviously, little Kai, um, and then we've got Xiao Kuai with her baby Jin. Jin is still clinging to his mum, but is beginning to find his feet. Today, the group are being given some treats to cool them down. Today we've got some uh, strawberry smoothie with a bit of mango and a bit of melon in there. Gordon will be straight in there with Kai. But not before Xiao Kuai has got enough for her and Jin. Jin has started to have a bit of solid food actually lately. Um, in fact, about three weeks ago I saw him eating his first bit of celery. He's gradually eating bits more and more when Xiao Kuai is eating her dinner. She happily gives him little bits here and there. Um, he's, he's got a lot of his teeth coming through now, so he's uh, munching away quite happily. In the wild, Orangs stay with their mums for up to seven years. This is a really important time for the apes, as they have to learn how to survive in the forest. In the case of female orangutans, they also learn how to care for infants by watching their mums care for their younger siblings. Kai is now six years old. He no longer has his mum's full attention, but he does still have a lot to learn from Xiao Kuai. He's also lapping up extra attention from father figure Gordon. Xiao Lan, meanwhile, is a proud auntie and has been dutifully showing respect for Xiao Kuai. The staff are hoping she's picking up tips in case she too becomes a mum. Orangs are sedate creatures. Nothing much phases them. Chimps, on the other hand, can be very lively, and over at Hananya's enclosure, they're about to get a treat which will send them wild. A large donation of fruit has arrived, and Shamak is keen to check there's enough to go round. Alpha male Hananya is busy with dominant female Cherry indoors, so it looks like it could be a free-for-all. Normally, the chimps would have to show respect to Hananya before rushing in and grabbing the goodies. But, as the boss is away, etiquette goes out of the window. Shamak's already got more than his fair share, and low-ranking Arthur, for once, is having a field day. the most of the boss free zone. But for her, an apple a day unfortunately hasn't been keeping the doctor away. Trudy has had a bloated stomach and suffered hair loss for the past 18 months. Alison and animal director Jeremy are having a meeting with the veterinary team to discuss Trudy's ongoing health issues. We put her on a very high dose of steroids. As to whether she actually did respond, we have the best poo from her ever since this started. And then things started going wrong again. The team suspected Trudy's problems may be being caused by irritable bowel syndrome. There's no doubt about it. To, to, to say, to diagnose definitely that she has irritable bowel syndrome, we're going to need samples from her gut. And the question is whether, having got those samples and it demonstrates irritable bowel, whether we change our treatment approach. The team have tried a variety of treatments and drugs to improve her condition, but they've had little success. We're a little bit of like, this is the detective team here because we don't know what all of our monkeys and apes have come from and what circumstances have contributed to who and what they are today. And it might be that she's got irritable bowel syndrome. But when we have removed significant amounts of gluten and wheat and other products that would aggravate the IBS from her diet, it doesn't seem really to have much of an effect. So we thought it was time just to dial it back, get her off any and all sort of different supplements and medications that we've been using on her. Trudy's not thriving right now and we'd, we'd like her to, so we're gonna do best effort that we can while she's with us forevermore, trying to work this mystery out. But quite honestly, I don't know if we'll ever have a full and final answer on this. But Trudy's health problems don't seem to be putting her off her food. And back at Hananya's, she's still making the most of the boss being away. 
Simon, meanwhile, has found a way to get maximum juice out of the oranges. But all good things come to an end, and as Hananya emerges from indoors, he's not happy to discover he's missed out. He exerts his dominance by displaying. Arthur creeps off to avoid being mugged. With no fruit left lying around, Hananya is seriously peeved. Arthur sensibly tucks in before he's challenged. Meanwhile, a display from Simon doesn't come off as planned. There's no calming Hananya down. But he does eventually realise he'll have to make do with the leftovers. Just this once. Alison and the team retired 10 stump-tailed macaques from a lab facility in Scotland. Wilmot, the only male, and the nine females have always lived indoors. Today is a big day at the park, because the stumpies are going to be allowed outside for the first time in their lives. But this morning, Alison woke to some bad news. Like so many things at the park, we have really good news and then often you know just terrible tragic news because that's the way of life here at the park you know life just marches on when jeremy first came in early this morning to check everybody out wilmot had passed um and it's just sort of one of those things i must say it sort of takes the wind out of your sails and is very upsetting and you know you've been talking about and thinking about nothing but sort of wilmot and his ladies for the past couple of days and just that quick, he's gone. Wilmot died of a heart attack as a result of cardiovascular disease. He was 16, and like the other Stumpies, was overweight and unfit. His sedentary lifestyle before he arrived at the park contributed to his death. But Alison has no regrets about moving Wilmot and giving him a chance at a new life. It was the right thing to try and do that with Wilmot because he had no future where he was and just very sad for him as an individual that he didn't make it. But as I'm telling all of the primate care staff and everybody else that is involved, we now got to look to the nine faces that are sitting there looking expectant in the windows right now. This is going to be the first day that they've ever stepped outside ever in their lifetime. A final safety check and a few touches to encourage wild behaviour. In their natural habitat, they forage through leaves to find food. I think we're ready to go. No one's quite sure how the Stumpies are going to react to their newfound freedom. So this next step for them, for the ladies, is quite going to be quite a big traumatic thing. And, and the things we need to look out for, are they agoraphobic? Will they come walking out into the great outdoors? Because they've never been out into an environment without a roof over their heads. Maureen is the first to take a look outside. But she's not brave enough to go any further. Kelly, too, is rather hesitant. It takes one of the dominant females, Miriam, to make the first move. She's quickly followed by some of the others. Stump-tailed macaques come from Southeast Asia. They're mainly ground-dwelling, which accounts for their shape. They don't need long arms and legs to swing through the trees like orangs and gibbons. Miriam has a quick look around, but decides that's enough fresh air for one day and heads back inside. Quickly followed by the rest of the gang, who aren't brave enough to stay outside on their own. This morning's gone really well so far. We've had eight of the nine females have actually come out into the outside enclosure. The only one who's not been out so far is Charlie, who seems to be sort of probably the lowest ranking of the group. With everyone else inside, Charlie takes a chance and goes for it. She's the youngest of this group of girls and is a bit of a loner. Being way down the pecking order, she's happy to keep out of everyone's way. 
It may take a while for the ugly monkeys to get used to having fresh air on their coats, but the staff hope eventually their exciting new enclosure will encourage them to get more exercise and lose some of their excess weight. The Stumpies aren't the only ones settling into their new home. Two woolly monkeys have recently arrived from Basel Zoo in Switzerland. Male Oaska and female Kuapa have been sent over as part of the European breeding program. They've been joined by two other females from the park, Lena and Zingu, who were in Bueno's troop. It's hoped that Oaska will breed with the girls and form a new family group. The staff are always looking for new ideas to keep the primates busy. Today, Holly and Sadie have prepared some suspended treats. We're going to be seeing how uh, they get on with some lollies we've made for them. We've tried to freeze lots of different flavours of things along a string to make big garlands of little ice lollies. So we've done a few different flavours. We've got uh, baby rice that's been made up with uh, strawberry flavoured squash. We've got different flavoured fruit juices, plain yoghurt and peach melba flavoured fruit yoghurt. So uh, if they don't like these, I don't think there's any pleasing these guys. We want the woolies to always be thinking about trying to behave naturally. So we want them to be hanging upside down with their tails like they would do in the wild, exercising their bodies and having to put in a little bit of effort for their treats. As they venture outside, Oaska is keen to display his dominance in front of the girls. The staff have been keeping a careful eye on him. We were a little bit nervous about introducing Oaska to two new girls because he has a bit of a reputation for being a little bit of a thug. But it turns out we were completely wrong. He's a big softy. Woolly monkeys have prehensile tails which act as a fifth limb. They use them to hang onto branches, allowing them to reach food which would otherwise be unavailable to them. In the wild, it's normal for girls to leave their family groups when they reach adolescence. So the staff weren't too concerned about moving Zingu and her auntie Lena in with the two new woolies. Zingu's left home for the first time, leaving her parents, which is obviously quite a, a nervous um, experience for her. Zingu is not yet sexually mature, but Lena is, and there are promising signs. We've got our suspicions that she actually really quite likes Oaska. She's tending to walk past him unnecessarily and wait for him to follow her, and she's being a little bit flirty, so we've got high hopes that this is actually the start of something really quite positive. Oaska was caught from the wild and has never fathered a child before. So if he has a baby with Lena, it would be a very valuable addition to the woolly monkey gene pool. Another group of New World primates in for a treat are the squirrel monkeys. The finishing touches are just being put to their newly revamped enclosure. We've taken the opportunity today to tear everything out and rebranch and rehose the whole enclosure. We've introduced these new rope ladders for them to see how they get on with it. We encourage them to climb and be active and busy and catch all the bugs and insects in here. Dominant female Alien is the first to test out the new playground. Closely followed by Samantha. Squirrel monkeys are social animals and in the wild live in groups of around 30 individuals. Here at the park there are five and they're all quite elderly. Topsy heads straight for some food while Turvey can't decide what to do first. Finally, it's Fidget's turn. Fidget! Hi! <laughs> Fidget was recently rehomed from Essex, where he'd lived in a cage on his own for 20 years. When he arrived at the park, he showed signs of repetitive behaviour, pacing back and forth, which he still does from time to time. The staff are hoping the new structures in the enclosure will help Fidget kick his old habits. Good boy. We're hoping by putting some hose there that it sort of will discourage him from pacing a little bit more and he'll wander off and just find a nice quiet place to sit if the girls come over towards him. 
suddenly he's gone from living on his own for many years to having these four bolshy females in here who give him a bit of grief if he steps out of line. However, the girls are way too busy to be bothered with fidget. Girls just have taken it right in their stride. They seem to be exploring and sort of climbing everywhere. Squirrel monkeys are very nimble. They need to be active to be able to catch the insects which make up a large part of their diet. Like all primates, they have forward-facing eyes which help them to judge distances so they can leap between branches and home in on food sources. We've tried to put some of the hosing and the branching through the plants so that they can sort of quickly dive in and grab insects. As Turvey demonstrates, squirrel monkeys are dexterous. They use their hands to catch insects and grab grubs from underneath pieces of bark. Fidget surprised us all, really. He's been climbing the hose, he's been at the highest point in the enclosure. We've never seen Fidget climbing quite so high. And he's just showing a really great improvement from when he first arrived here. Not to be upstaged by Fidget, Samantha has one last trick up her sleeve. Next time on Monkey Life, the big release, or the great escape, as the male capuchins are finally set free into their new outdoor enclosure. This is the first time that they'll actually see the sky without mesh in front of it, so yeah, it's going to be a really exciting day for them. And the ring-tailed lemurs lap up a treat.